Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Recap, a guy's review. Very interesting video here. We have Jordan Kimball and other former Bachelor contestants speaking up in defense of Chris Harrison and sharing some information about cancel culture, Rachel Lindsay, and what they think about all of the events surrounding this season. This is a very interesting video. Uh, but I do have to start it out with some caveats. So this video was a roundtable, a Zoom roundtable uh, that took place at Prager University. Now, Prager University, not a university. So I just wanted to share the media bias chart for Prager U before I air this. I think it's a responsible thing to do because it is a very biased company. Um, as we see, Prager University is uh, uh, on the far right of the media bias chart. Uh, this is from thousands of feedback uh, from people. Prager University is an American nonprofit organization that creates videos on various political, economic, and philosophical topics from a conservative perspective. The university was created by conservative Dennis Prager, an American syndicated talk show host to teach fundamental concepts. Uh, let's see, and then here we've got Prager Univer Prager U is considered low on factual reporting. Not that important for this video since we're listening to the former Bachelor contestants' words coming out of their mouth, but uh, it does it does show you that there is always a bias with different media, and it's important to know that bias before you consume it. So according to this media uh, bias, factcheck.com, uh, it's considered extreme right propaganda, poor sourcing, failed fact checks, false claims, and um, factual reporting is low. Uh, so there you have it, folks. Again, this is a, um, they have sued, a, a, it is a strictly conservative YouTube channel and news website. Um, Dennis Prager is a neoconservative conservative radio host and columnist for the far right and questionable WND. I don't know what that is. Prager U has developed two partnership programs to help cultivate relationships with educators. All right, so there you have it, folks. They have sued um, YouTube for discrimination because they have said that uh, YouTube uh, and Facebook have demonetized them for unlawful reasons. A lawsuit was thrown out in court. Anyway, let's get into it. A conversation with several Bachelor alum, and this would be the counter argument to a lot of, I would say, the majority of people that uh, want um, either accountability for Chris Harrison or uh, some sort of growth with diversity within the program. I will play this interview and interject interject where I see fit. You know, I came out on Twitter just about two weeks ago uh, in defense of Chris. Uh, that tweet very quickly became an Us Weekly article uh, where some recent contestants were disclosing that they felt very uncomfortable in Chris's presence, where I've been with the franchise for three years now, and I've never heard anyone of any color or gender or nationality or religion ever disclose, ever, whether in private or publicly, that Chris Harrison did anything to make them feel uncomfortable. So what's going to be important here is to understand the difference between someone's like personal story, which would be anecdotal versus other people's stories. So just because, um, just because, uh, Jordan Kimball hasn't heard of any racial or racist issues on the, on the, on the scenes doesn't mean that they didn't occur. It just kind of means the culture was there that this wasn't talked about. So again, not saying that he, he wasn't living his truth, but just because he didn't hear of any issues d doesn't mean they didn't exist. So we got to throw out that whole, look, no one said anything to me. It's like, yeah, well, no, 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 no doy. To bring back no doy, they would say something to you. You're, you're not exactly, um, you wouldn't be considered a beacon for uh, trust in the HR department of The Bachelor. Chris is in the presence of people on set very, very briefly. And anything behind the scenes is truly like it's a pleasure he's he cracks jokes he's a joy to be around uh i've even had the opportunity of meeting some of his kids um i mean all 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 in all all american guy very nice true company guy um you know he he carries in his uh, suitcase with him you know all of the things that you'd want to see in the host of a show <laughs> representing diversity and all these other different types of people. And to my knowledge, he's always been, you know, very nice, very upfront, very honest. And, you know, he's been a good guy. So I don't know, Jillian, Garrett, I don't know what your experiences are, but I can speak for mine and the people around me from the time I was on. I've never heard of anyone disclosing that they've had an issue with him. You can have, you, you can be a good person. 
everything he's saying about Chris Harrison could all be true. It doesn't necessarily take away from the tone deafness that occurred in his interview with Rachel Lindsay. So as people will say, well, he said a lot of things that, that have weight. He said a lot of things that Amin al Acho said. Some of that all may be true. With all that said, though, in his position as a producer and host of the show, um, he, he needed to be held to a standard he didn't reach when it comes to listening to Rachel Lindsay and listening to experiences of other people. So that's where he fell short. So a lot of the arguments for Chris Harrison, as we'll see, don't exactly hold weight because it's like, yeah, no, like it's a little bit more complex than just saying, well, he's a good guy. You know, anyway, we'll get into it. Yeah, I mean, so my experience personally is that Garrett. as much as we traveled, uh, a lot of viewers don't know, you do get to spend time with him off camera and like off script, so to say, uh, when you're traveling because cameras aren't on. You get to talk to him. He's always a very genuine guy. Make sure everyone feel as home or sorry, at home. And um, and that's the thing, too. And I mean, Julian, Jordan, y'all know this. He's got nice when, hair. Um, I guess some kind of issue pops up. A lot of people in the reality TV world like to hop on that issue to stay relevant. And I think that's Correct. all that's going on here is that someone said one thing about what Chris said and everyone just hops on him and like buries him when we just disregard everything that he's done in the past. It's so good. Oh, and by the way, what he said was, hey, let's just give this woman a chance to speak. So what Garrett is explaining here, by the way, got to love the American flag in the background. Let me tell you something. If you don't get the chance. All right. What Garrett <laughs> is saying here is he's basically uh, defining cancel culture, people hopping on an issue to stay relevant. I don't necessarily agree that this is the case with this. There might be some contestants that hop on to stay relevant, but a lot of people like Rachel Lindsay, she's already in the driver's seat of relevancy here. I don't think she needed this conversation to go sideways. She's got a job at Extra. She's already doing well. I don't think she needed this to go in a direction to stay relevant. There could be uh, scenarios in which other people... Um, you know, are trying to stay relevant. We look at Taylor Nolan. She's kind of played both sides of the coin. We've talked about her centering herself on her whiteness um, with those horrible tweets that she said back in the back in the day, and now centering herself in her blackness by um, by taking up causes. And, and she, you know, she's a example of someone who played uh, each side when it was convenient. Again, these aren't my words. This is what that's been t told to me. Uh, but uh, but it, it seems to line up now when it comes to Garrett. Like, like I said with Jordan, you know, no one's saying Chris Harrison wasn't a good guy. That's not the issue here. The question is whether it was right or wrong. Uh, but I do understand the idea that people have that cancel culture is everyone just piling on to someone. It's almost like picking off the weakest link in the herd because that's easier to do than picking off the top dog. So did they strike on Chris Harrison when he was weak, when it was culturally okay to? Or are people just authentically disappointed in Chris Harrison as like a father figure to them, as a mentor to them. I think, I think, you know, it's safe to assume people were disappointed in Chris Harrison more so than just un, uh, you know, piling onto him without any warrant, you know? And why is that such a bad thing? Well, I, I mean, that's my viewpoint on it. He's always been a very genuine guy, a very nice guy. And it's, I uh, don't understand he, it. And Gary, you're absolutely right. He even, he even said, I'm not defending her. I just like give her some time. She's going to come out with a statement and she's under contract with ABC. You guys know how it is when you're under contract. They try to delay these, these statements that you're putting out, you know, as long as possible. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It just seemed. This, so this is interesting. This is interesting. Uh, the defense that Rachel Kirk Connell was under contract and ABC was delaying her statement. This is what Rachel Kirk Connell's mom has said. And then Rachel Kirk Connell, she hasn't personally admitted to this, but you do have to wonder what took her so long to apologize. That's where this was all gaining steam. And is it suspect to think that Chris Harrison was teasing her apology so that it would drive ratings to the after the final rose ceremony? I 100% think that that was the case that I, now the question will become was Chris Harrison doing this as the guy who likes to hype things up like you're gonna have to wait and see how it turns out kind of the um the um uh you know uh the, just the uh you know he the what's the what's the term he's the hype man Chris Harrison's the hype man now the question is do, do the producers of ABC want him to do that in which case that's why he is 
signed up with his lawyer, Brian Friedman, power attorney, entertainment lawyer, Brian Friedman. Is it because Chris Harrison was operating on behalf of ABC in that interview saying, you're going to have to wait for her to speak? Now, I don't think anyone has any issue with him saying, you're going to have to wait for her to speak. The issue is that, that, the way he interacted with Rachel Lindsay. It's a very nuanced, very specific thing here. So I think a lot of times people will argue the wrong points and that's where you lose the communication. So for saying that, but I do understand, I do understand that people pick up on different aspects of it. That's just the crazy litmus test for the world that we live in is that you got half the country hearing one thing and they are looking at it in it one way and then another half of the country hearing the same thing and looking at it differently. And these are different perspectives from the different types of media we consume and just the different ways our brains work. So, uh, but very fascinating that uh, they mentioned that Chris Harrison's under contract and how hard it is to get your statement out when you're under contract. As we know, Luke P sued for $120,000 by the producers of The Bachelorette. Luke P was forced to pay $120 after a mediator, a uh, retired Los Angeles Superior Court judge, uh, deemed him at fault for breaching the contract by speaking to the wrong media. So they're not playing around, guys. Now, the question is, like I said... Um, where do you draw the line between promoting the show and fueling this racist wildfire? And I guess Chris Harrison uh, got burned on that one. Largely ridiculous to me because he was pointing out how ridiculous cancel culture was and did not defend her at all. But I actually kind of, I was glad for the things that he did say. You know, we should show her grace. We should hear her point of view. Let's not jump to conclusions. You know, the worst thing about cancel culture is you're implying intent on someone you don't know. So the one of the problems with Prager University with this roundtable is you're not getting anyone's pushback thought. It's always good in conversation to have pushback from others. I even get this with my solo YouTube channel. People will call in, people will write me, people will blast me on their Instagram, and they'll push me back, and it makes me sort of rethink my opinions. Sometimes I still stand by my opinions and sometimes I go, you know what? I never looked at it through that lens. So while Chris Harrison was asking for grace for Rachel Kirk Connell, people argued that he wasn't giving Rachel Lindsay the grace to feel her feelings as she's reacted to, to what's happened. So I feel like if we had somebody to um, voice a different side of this story, we'd get a little bit closer to the truth here. Um, so I don't think we're quite there. I think th that they're too busy being sympathetic with Chris Harrison and not for people that might have felt hurt. And it's not just because you liked a photo in front of a Confederate flag. It's almost just a culmination of things. I think it's way bigger than Rachel Kirk Connell. It's a culmination of the Lees, the not you know the the contestant that they didn't vet beforehand who had racist tweets. It's a culmination of not having a black bachelor or bachelorette for 15 years. It's a culmination of a lot of things, little systemic things. That's you know the straw that broke the camel's back here. And yep. destroying her life. And you guys, like Jordan and Garrett, you understand, and, I, and I've and i noticed throughout the years, like guys kind of get a different feedback than girls get when they're on the show. But you really get, you still understand to um, a limit, like how much, you know, we we get hit by the media and how much we get hit in our personal lives. Yeah. And, oh, man. Like, and it's almost like America lines us all up and they just start taking shots at us one by one. And because of our contracts, we can't defend ourselves a lot of times and we can't defend our new friends either. So to see a girl just kind of like hung out to dry, it just, it maybe hurt for her. Well, I don't care what the intention was. I don't think most people watching reality TV really understand when you're on a huge network, uh, cable channel reality show, how much people are getting into your lives and getting into your head. And I still have a lot of friends who didn't go what, through, what she went through the intensity level of demeaning her character and they're still in therapy and it's been five years for me and is even the cancel culture with the thing about it is that you never really get a chance to like defend yourself like you said because once the attacks come and you start to get canceled it's like it's already too late i mean the people who see that there's a no news article they're not waiting around to hear your side of the story this is an interesting fact that operates on both sides of the media that people are we consume most of our news from reading the headlines of a story and not the actual depth of the story. So a lot of times, if you read a headline, obviously headlines are sensationalized. Even my YouTube channel thumbnails are sensationalized. The profit 
model is set up to get clicks. So you got get you have to get someone to click on a headline. I have said for a long time one of the ways to solve this is to start prosecuting a media companies with sensationalized uh, headlines that aren't the the facts of the story. In most cases, the editor writes the headline. The headline is not written by the actual journalist. So in many cases, the journalist will write a great story and then the editors like will just pull the, the craziest quote. You know what I mean? That's just how it works. Um, so anyway, yeah, Will Witt, this guy here, again, the nice hair happening over here. On the conservatives have nice hair. I'm just saying, um, you know, not, not to, not to, not to uh, wonder what my um, political uh, opinions are, but I am a progressive I am for uh, plenty of progressive issues, but I am also for the diversity of thought and having conversations because I think we get closer to the truth when we have conversations. Unfortunately, the way, like I said, that media is sort of monetized now, it's it's kind of um, boiled down to a niche system. You play to your side. Fox News plays to their side. CNN plays to their side. PragerU to their side. So you only, it becomes an echo chamber for things you believe in. And I think we'd actually benefit from having a conversation with some of the these former contestants and some people on the progressive side. I think you would benefit from talking because clearly a lot of these people get along in a social setting, but when you add politics, it's so divisive. And I do agree, like in Hollywood, you can't be conservative in Hollywood. You can't, you know, they, they, you, it's not, it's a very liberal town. It's a liberal town with the way it all works. And that's be, and it's, and um, I mean, I mean, look at the facts. Half of our country is conservative and half are liberal. And of course, it's on a spectrum. So, um, there is divisiveness. Half the country votes red and half votes blue to a percentage point. It always leans a percentage. Maybe on a crazy one-sided election, it goes three to four percent in one direction over the other. So the fact that you don't have that represented in media, it really does show that the divide is there. And then you've got these companies like the, you know, these companies like PragerU that they just like they're trying to give content for the conservatives who don't get a voice in other places. I'm not defending them. I just think conversation is a lot more productive when you hear different sides of the of, of opinions and then you can kind of correct each other along the way. I think this would have been a way more productive conversation if they had um, some more diversity on it. They're just going to cancel you already and think that you're a horrible, terrible person. And the things that like the, the this girl got canceled for on the show, I mean, what ridiculous things like wearing a colonial dress or like liking a picture of someone dressing up as a Native American, like it's absolutely ridiculous what they actually want to cancel these people for. It's it's things that are not even that offensive at all. What do you guys think about the things that she was canceled for and, and the whole situation? I mean, I've also dressed up as a Native American for Halloween. Oh, I have. I mean, it's another thing she got canceled oh, yeah. for. Like, I don't know. Big Squanto I mean, I don't. It's, it's weird. Whatever. And I and I think that got that know, big Squanto energy. What she was thinking the day she dressed up, but I really, I just strongly doubt that she was thinking about what it, this party stood for. I bet she was thinking about her dress and how her makeup looked. And I agree with Jillian Anderson in the sense. Hold on, folks. I gotta put my Harry Potter mug out there to block you from hating on me. Uh, thank you, by the way, Jen Murphy, for this. Our friend Jen Murphy gave us this. This from Jen. Yeah, this is from Jen Murphy. Yeah, absolutely. Love our fans. You guys are the best. Uh, love a good mug. I agree with her in the sense, hold on, folks, that Rachel Kirk Connell was more worried about what how her dress would look and not the racial ramifications. And that's part of the problem. That's part of the discussion that needs to be had. I mean, it's almost like Rachel Kirk Connell walked into a bear trap of her own ignorant, uh, walking through the woods, not understanding that that's where she was, not understanding the landmines that exist around this cultural problem of normalizing the antebellum era. Because a lot of people didn't know about it. I didn't know what antebellum meant from Rhode Island. Hell am I supposed to know what antebellum meant? You're telling me my public school education failed me? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, but she was 21. <sighs> I know 50 year olds that would fail. I know, I bet you 80% of the people I know would fail the test that immigrants have to take to get citizenship in the United States of America. We are so uneducated. I studied abroad in France. They all knew more about the US political system than I did. Our head's been in the sand. Her date that day, possibly she was having a drink. Something that normal college kids think about. 
I'm going to be honest with you. So I went to college and did all that. I'm from a very southern town on the Gulf Coast of Florida, just north of Tampa. That's where I grew up and went to high school. I have never, ever dressed up as a colonial person or a confederate or anything. Um, there is a hotel in Crystal River called The Plantation, and there were some school functions held there and everything. But it was a hotel uh, with great customer service and everything. I've never, I've never, ever taken an institution and charged it racially. I've never taken... A costume and charged it racially. Uh, they're saying now that when you do these things, you're complicit to racism. But if there are literally no acts of racism, I don't. I don't see that quite as being complicit to racism. I think it actually takes away from claims from people that have actually experienced someone of the other race coming at them. You know what I mean? Jordan Kimball, everybody, coming out of strong, really. Listen, I got to make a second part to this video. It's too long. There's too much to talk about here. I do want to make sure that I uh, I weigh in what might be counter opinions to their discussion. I know people will uh, leave a comment. Dave, how could you possibly air these things on PragerU? Look, I mean, come on, it's not some neo-Nazi website here. These are the, the this is the a lot of what you know. This is what half the country feels about this issue. You know, call it 30%, call it 50 or 40%. You don't get to cancel half the country. You get to educate each other. So there might be people that don't understand where Rachel Lindsay comes at it. Part two of this video, which I'm going to be making after this one, part two of this video will tell you what, what they had to say about Rachel Lindsay, which is actually very fascinating. And I, I mean, no disrespect to Rachel Lindsay, but they completely disagree with her with the way that she's gone about um, educating people. And it's, and it's fascinating to hear. Uh, but anyway, folks, let me know what you guys think of this video, uh, talking about why they think Chris Harrison was not in the wrong, their own anecdotal personal uh, evidence. And um, and let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment if you guys want. You don't have to leave a voicemail about this, but on the weekends, I play voicemail updates. So there is the voicemail number. You guys can call it and just say, hi, let me know what's going on with your life. Tell me some good news. I just like to play your voicemails and it's a nice open aired conversation. So you can call. Uh, that number right there. It's a Google voicemail number. And stay tuned for part two. I'll be making it just after I upload this one. This is a conversation with conservative bachelor contestants on PragerU. Oh boy, we are having fun here on a Friday. Lots to come. See you guys in a bit. Hit the subscribe button.